Hello, hello. Hi guys, happy Monday. It is another Monday. I'm here again. Um, happy to be with you all, my YouTube community, my YouTube family. Hope everybody is good. Hope all is well with you and yours. Um, hope that you had a wonderful weekend, a restful one. My week was quite a bit hectic. Um, so yeah, I hope you got it in. It being self-care, it being me time, it being a minute to breathe. <laughs> um, what day was it? Friday. Yes, Friday. My darling sister, um, she messaged me during the week and she said on Friday, I um, yeah, I basically come and take a tear past then. <laughs> and we went, we drove, um... We bought a nice chiller at Rituals. We drove back and it was fantastic. Listen to me. Listen to me well. <laughs> now I understand, you know, people would have friends and they would have associates. Or like, forgive, uh, forgive this mess here. Uh, um, packing scrunchies. So, yeah. I know people would have friends or whatever. And you need to, you need to, you need to pick wisely. You need to pray and ask God to pick for you. You need to pray and ask God to send you the right ones for you. You want some long-standing ones. You want, even if they're long-standing and they now come, you want them to, you want them to be good. <laughs> ask God for some good ones. You hear? I watched a video. Um, a customer of mine, she posted a video with a lady in a, um, her wedding. And she is narrating over the video of her wedding where her veil fell off and then her father quickly went and put it on but of course he didn't put it on like a normal woman would he rest it on top the front of her head yeah i laugh out so loud but what was unfunny to me is the fact that she had like about eight bridesmaids um made of honor included and them girls, them start to laugh is one of the girls in the middle of the line, not even the middle of the line, in the middle of the line, left the cackling set, came forward and calmly, neatly placed Tanti Veil where it was supposed to be and took back her hoof care from the one who was laughing and stood, stood back up in position as nobody's business. That is friend to have. And she should have fired the rest. As far as I can see, out of that age, she had one friend. One I said, no, that to say, my goodly friend slash sister, slash sister from another mother, another father, another everybody, came and got her friend and just took a drive. I am living in Dingomati and we reached as far as Central. She didn't ask me for gas money. She didn't ask, nothing, nothing, nothing. And we just drive and we talk and we laugh and we came back home and that was that. And you need to have somebody that will say to you, hey, I'll come in, I'll come in and get you. <laughs> now, she don't, she don't have a clue what that did for me. Because my week, it was, whoo, it was long. It was long all how long emotionally, no, long mentally, long spiritually, long. It was just long. It was a long week. And she just came half past ten Friday, I'm coming to get you. I think and I'm going to meet her. I said, well, I'll meet you down the hill. No, I'm watching you with a sun blazing by me now. <laughs> I'll come in and get you. And came and got me. And we went. So I just saying, there's not the um, point of the, the um, session today, but I just saying, get, get, get your people, eh? Get your people. And if you don't hire your people, ask God to send your people. Send your people for you. Send your people that will check for you. That will just... Do, just do, just do the needful without you even asking or saying a word. You hear what I say? Anywho, so happy Monday. <laughs> I hope you all were great. You are great. You were great. Um, The week gone by there, this weekend gone by, and you're looking forward with all excitement for all that God is about to do in your life. Miraculously and otherwise. I really looking forward. <laughs> So, 
you all are going to are talking about ladies and gentlemen <laughs> um to the gents viewing i'd like to say i'm going to address a gentleman today you see i'm doing better one in one out i started to um think that's until Holy Ghost um, decided to turn, turn, turn up the whole cart and do what he wants again. Now that I'm doing what I want, I just seen it happen to fall in line this way for the past couple of weeks. A lady, a gent, a lady, and I come back to a gent again. Anyway, before we take up too much time here. And I'm going to be short. I start to say that sparingly because it has end up going down the hill after that. So we in Genesis chapter 25. Chapter 25. And we're reading about this gentleman. Now, what he did, it just amazed me. Like, what he did was amazing to me. So, I'm talking to my gents um, to show them how to represent. I'm talking to the ladies to let them know what to look for. Because you single ladies who ain't find one yet, try and try and um, know what to look for. And those of you who already have one, pray, pray. <laughs> pray, you're done there. You're done sign paper, ring and finger, pray. <laughs> So verse 19, I have to go from verse 19, Yeah, from verse 19 it says, This is the genealogy of Isaac, Abraham's son. So we talk about Isaac today. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as wife. Look at the age that we get married, and when you pass 25, you hit in 30 and you ain't get married, there are people that start to act as if you something wrong with you. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian, and Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded, there's even say, there's a toilet. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. I'll read it again. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife. Because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife. Because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Now, I'll tell you, I'm going to be short. I was stunned and amazed that this man, a plea is not no little request. You come and you ask, and you, um, you go about your business, and you, know, you put in the request, you ask this week. You ask next week uh, because you probably realize your wife bummy. Plea is uh, looking at a meaning here. A request made in an urgent and emotional manner. So that means he didn't go once, he didn't go twice, he didn't just ask and go about your business. You, you beg, you cry, you, you, you state, you make a statement, you state your case, you state your case before God. This man plea on behalf of his wife because she was barren. Sister Jane, with your single self, asking God, Lord, help me take me out of the singleness and a, a Lord, I desire to get a husband. Um, Madam, in the meantime, while you have time, ask God, ask God to prepare such an one that will be able, when you're in a situation where you cannot do something for yourself, because if you're barren, you're barren, it's only God that can fix that. It is only God. Yeah, and you hear the Bible say, And the Lord granted his request, and she conceived. Am I read it properly? And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. The Lord did it. So when you're in that position where it's only God alone could help you, you need somebody to have your back, to be able to go before God and beg as if it's you begging. They're begging for you as if it's them. It's them in the position. I mean, it's him because it's his wife. But at the same time, you plea, you go and plea emotionally. Plea. When you're in court and somebody listen and plea, they are coming with, 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 with evidence and they want to, to give proof as to what, to, to prove if the plea is innocent, to prove this is why they're supposed to, this person needs to be pardoned. Isaac was on God's behalf saying, this Lord, this woman, she deserved to be a mother. She deserved to be a mother. She deserved to have children. He went with a plea. And he plea. He plea and he plea until God granted his request. I am saying, I come out here. To talk to the men. <laughs> to talk to the men who are not functioning in that area. To talk to the men who are not doing that kind of thing on behalf of their wife. Um, praying for her job. 
praying that she functions in the giftings that God has called her to. Praying that she step out of fear and 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 have boldness and remove remove God from her timidity and remove from her Lord anxiety and and lack of faith. Increase of God, you need somebody to do that on your behalf, and you there only begging God to send you a man. Ask for what kind. Make sure you have on your list specific things that make sense. Not how we should look on the color of his skin. Because I'm telling you, you can get one looking nice, 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 nice. And when you need somebody to play on your behalf, you know how to say, Dear God, eh? Ask me if that makes sense. I beg. So let me hear. And let me, let me please let you hear. <laughs> when you're asking, ask for a good thing, please. And this, this was stellar for me. This was stellar for me. You, you get a wife, your wife in a position, and you are, you are on... You are before God emotionally. The, the um things say urgent and emotional and an urgent and emotional manner. You know, he making that request. And an urgent and emotional manner. Lord, do it and uh, do it for her quick, Lord. Do it for her quick. Take her out of the situation quick. Lord, let her not have to go through this another year. Lord, don't let another birthday pass. This is this is his urgent request. His plea. In a in an emotional manner. On behalf of his wife. I'm telling you, ask, ask, for, ask God for a good thing. Eh? And some of you just pass good thing, package in a particular way. And because it didn't come wrapped in the gift paper that you're looking for, all you're laying good thing pass and all you just pick until all you pick mess. Yes, I'm saying it. I beg. When you're going before God and you're asking, asking, yes, I'm talking to the single ladies and I'm talking to the men as well. I'm telling the men, this gay act together, if this is not your, if this is not your mother's operanda, get together. And to you ladies who are looking for somebody, make sure they have this together. I'm just saying, if you're asking God for things, you ain't have it yet. And you're asking, ask for good thing. And you don't study what it come in. If somebody come and they bring something that I need, for me in a black plastic bag. I do not care. You hear what I'm telling you? I don't care if you put a bow around the bag. If you put two bags inside of a bag and, and just hand me it, hand me it bunched up together. But what I need is in the bag. Thank you very much. God bless your whole soul. But no, some of us, you want nice glittery paper in a nice gift bag. You want a card to go with it. And God telling you, hey, in the bag, garbage bag. And you, you find it and come. This could have been more presentable than that for you. <laughs> stay there. Stay there. Stay there and wait. And it's because you still waiting. It's because you ain't paying attention to the thing that God done put in front of your face. It probably done in front of your face already. I didn't plan to say this, but I just saying. It probably already in your face. But because it didn't come in the bag that you wanted to be in. You, you not taking it. You not checking the bag on your thing right there. Stay there and wait. Sit there and wait. I just saying that must be for somebody. I didn't like I said, I didn't plan to say it, but if that fall in your garden, sister, open your plastic bag, please, and tell God thanks. So I am saying, make sure when you're asking, ask for good thing. This man went before God, not just once. Because it's in another one day court case. I don't know about that. I know it's a thing where you, you go and they give you a next date and they give you a next date. So you plea, you start to go back and you state your case. And then the, the judge and the jury have to go and deliberate as to whether, whether or not they're going to grant your request. So Mr. Mazi went with your request and made it in an emotional and urgent manner. And came back a couple times and made said requests again. And if he didn't find he <laughs> he gets through with the, with the small court, he go to, to the, 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 a bigger court to make his statement. Make a plea to make a request. I am saying to the men, if you have somebody in your life, wife, friend, you don't even have to be your wife, friend, um, business associate, please pray on that individual's behalf. If you know they have something that they want and they're not getting, pray, pray. When you're praying for people, pray as if it's you. Pray as if it's you. Right now I'm praying for, for, for some ladies. It's eight of them, eight. I make over my list, my list, my list went down and now I have more names added to my list. It's a specific list that I have. I'm praying for these ladies. And I'm telling you, you would swear it's me I'm praying for. First I want it. First I want it. First I want it. And I am emotional about it before God making my, my plea on their behalf. 
And I am saying, if you are doing this on behalf of somebody, you are talking to the men and I'm talking for others who probably praying for somebody or you know about somebody who have a situation and you say, you say, I'm going to, I will pray for you. Please do it. And please, please, please do it. Make it an emotional and urgent request. Let God know. Lord, you see, I'm coming to you again with this. This is heavy on my heart and I need you. I need you to do this for me. And Isaac prayed. And he, he plea, he made his plea. And God granted his request. I'm just letting you know that sometimes it might take some emotion and you applying some urgency to, to, to the matter in terms of how often you come. There's another uh, story in the Bible with a woman. The, she was going before the king so much. The man said, because of your constant, you're nagging me so much, I will get hit because I fell up. More or less. You come and tell me with this so often. I cannot, if that woman come and ask me about this thing one more time, I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. So before I lose it, just give her what she want for my peace. That, to me, is what took place here with Isaac. And because he went with this urgent, emotional plea before God, on, on behalf of his wife, it wasn't the wife, you know. The Bible say, God answered, granted the plea of, of Isaac, not the plea of Rebecca, of Isaac, the person who prayed. So I am praying and trusting God. Like I told you all for these eight ladies, and I am praying that when God realized that wait, this girl is every day, she write it down. She put scripture by a trust me, a scripture at the top, the names in the middle, scripture at the bottom. And today, that this week I find another verse, Mark 11, 24. Ask, pray, pray, ask, believe, receive. That's what that verse said. If you ask and you pray and you believe you receive and you believe you will receive. That I tell you, I take all them four words. Pray, ask, believe, receive. In that order. Pray, ask, believe, receive. And this Mr. Isaac here prayed, asked, he believed and he received. It was not Rebecca's prayer that the Lord um, um, granted the request for. No, it was Isaac's prayer. Who are you praying for? How earnest is your prayer? Your plea? How urgent are you making it before God? How, how, how fervent is your prayer on behalf of that individual? I am asking us to take that into consideration. Husbands, I am saying, if you know your wife in a particular way, needing something, or whether it be her business or whatever, pray, pray earnestly before God that God will turn the situation around, that God will fix this or help her, or, or you're seeing something that she has been hurt about for years and you realize that this, this has been a, a, a traumatic, a painful thing that left this wound, Lord, and I need you to heal my wife. Do that, please and thanks, just like Isaac so that God can answer your plea and grant your request on behalf of person or persons that you may be praying for. It was not Rebecca's request. God answered. It was the request of Isaac. How urgent, emotional, um, constant is your prayer for the person? How? How are you when they tell you about the problem? They say, I will pray for your girl. I will remember you in prayer. You remember once? What kind of lawyer is that? This lawyer here, Isaac, went before the courts with his plea. And he went urgent and emotionally. And God granted his request. I am saying, if you are taking up somebody's plea or somebody's, somebody's situation, you're buying into it and you're making it yours, I am trusting, I'm telling you, I am trusting God for God to answer my request for these eight ladies. These eight ladies, I am praying. And I am saying, what if you could answer Isaac's request? Because he came with his plea, I beg you, please. Answer mine on their requests, on their, on their behalf. Answer my request, my plea, on their behalf. Perform with that which only you could do. Because the Bible say, and the Lord is only, God that could, is only God that could do what I need them to do for those ladies. And I am saying, God, if it's you alone that could do that, I, I, I hear and here I am, Lord, <laughs> standing in the gap for again. I hear again. I ain't see it yet. I ain't get no news. But here, here am I again with the same request for the same people. Here am I, Lord. Is there anybody that you are doing that for? And if you are doing it, are you doing it constantly, emotionally, making it a matter of prayer because it's so urgent to you as if it was you? Isaac, um, request was granted. 
It wasn't Rebecca's prayer. It wasn't Rebecca's plea. It was Isaac's plea. So I am saying, if there's somebody or somehow, if uh, if you're praying for me, listen, make it emotional and urgent. <laughs> Make it emotional and urgent. And I'm saying if you're doing that for somebody, buy into it. Buy into whatever their problem is. If you know if it's a, it's a financial burden or some debt that somebody in and you're just, you are, oh, you become overwhelmed and consumed with this thing. Lord, I need you to, to show up. I need you to make a way. I need you to provide for so and so. I need you to do this for her because this is, this is bothering me. It should bother you enough to go before God constantly, emotionally and make it be urgent about it, Lord. I need you to do this. I really need you to do this, God. I need you to do this. I need you to do this, Lord. That was Isaac on behalf of Rebecca. It was not Rebecca's request. It was Isaac's plea that was answered. His plea that was granted. His request that was answered. I am seeing again. Please, man, if you have a wife or looking for a wife, Make sure that you are this type of individual. That you would, you, you are a man of prayer. You are a man of prayer. Please be, please, please, because things are happening in life where you, you cater for that. It's not no, no chapter in the rule book that prepares you for some of the things that life does throw at you. And so you need to have praying partners, praying people in your life. You need to have them. And I'm saying, sister, tante, whoever you are that might be looking. For somebody try and look good look good and don't look for a good looking one look for a praying one too look for i'm not saying don't be attracted to the person that you want to spend your, your, your life with however i'm not saying that i am just saying per chance it ain't come in the height or it ain't come in the color that you want please open your plastic bag and make sure that what inside is what you need make sure and you need to have somebody if you are a single person you need to have somebody that will go in before God and make your request, his request as if it is. That is all, folks. <laughs> so take care, everybody. Um, have a great week. Those of you that are going out, um, I know the business people, um, retail, people in retail will be able to go out and open their stores again. Thank God, y'all, because mercy. You get her products to make and, and place them close. <laughs> so, those of you that are going out, please be safe. Remember to wear your mask. Remember to sanitize, social distance, wear your mask. Um, ensure that your place is prepared for the barrage of people that was inside all the time and was and can't wait for a little open. Make sure that you, you stagger the amount of people that are inside at the same time. Uh, make sure you take, check temperatures, do study your body data, focus on the lives, focus on the health of your staff because they are mingling with the public. Um, so yeah, have a great week guys. Remember that self-care is not selfish, that self-care is your act of self-love to yourself. Um, yeah, and stay, stay safe guys, stay safe, love you all. Have a great, wonderful week. Take care.